every day we rely more and more on our portable electronic devices. And that means that we need portable sources of electrical energy. As a result, a whole new market of battery power packs of all sizes has sprung up. Everything from the small USB type to the huge boxes capable of powering your entire home. And in recent months, the bigger kinds are gaining more and more popularity. This is a clear indication that people need more energy and more power. But with that comes a very particular challenge. Let me explain. Portable energy power packs are made the following way. You start with a box, then you add some battery, usually one of a few suitable lithium chemistry types. Something with the most energy and power density so your box can remain small and light. Then you add a whole assortment of electronics, like a charger, a bunch of DC to DCs to provide the different voltages for all your different ports, and usually a big DC the AC inverter to provide the AC plugs needed to pretty much power most home appliances. Now here's where it gets tricky for the manufacturers. In the search for making the ultimate, most versatile power station, the one that can power the widest variety of devices and can power them for the longest time, they keep making them bigger and heavier to the point that you can no longer consider them portable. To me, portable means somewhere in the 40 to 50 pound area. Anything above that and the average person can't lift and carry the device. So what I've been noticing is that manufacturers do this one thing. They put a big battery with a small inverter in a box. And that way, well, you can power small devices for a very long time. And some other times what they do is they put a big inverter with a smaller battery. And what that allows you to do is power pretty much anything, anything from a small device to something that is power hungry, but for small periods of time. Now, what if you could do both and yet remain small and light? This is exactly what Watt Ant is attempting to do. They are a startup company entering this market with a very interesting take on the portable power station. Modularity. Unlike every other portable solar generator out there, this one, the battery can be separated from its inverter. So instead of having to carry the entire system in one box, you can carry half of it for roughly half the weight. This way, this system remains on the upper end of capability and both energy density and power density while being as light as most of the smaller competitors. So let's take a look at this system and see how it stacks up. So this is everything that I got, right? First, let's go with the big stuff. We have one 1500 watt battery, and then we have a 3000 watt battery, right? Uh, and then we have a 3000 watt inverter. Right, and it's a separate box and it only has the AC plugs in here. The DC stuff, all the ports for the DC come in the battery. So there's a USB-C and then USB uh, 3.0, it's right here. Then you have the charging ports and then you have a 12 volt uh, port in here, right? The, the socket, the cigarette lighter socket. And then you have these little barrel ones that can be used for a bunch of smaller devices. And then you have a big 25 amp uh, 12 volt output here. So these are great for like an RV application where you have devices, right? And those are found on the smaller battery and then on the bigger battery. And you could use all these ports without the AC uh, inverter. You just turn it on in here and then all these ports come alive. Same thing with the small one, right? But if you needed the AC, then you would plug this in here. Next, let's look at charging. This uh, came with two chargers, one 450 watts and the other one at 900 watts, right? These are both 24 volts. Uh, they both can be plugged into here so you can charge it quicker or slower, depending on what you want. I'm pretty sure they're gonna offer these ones uh, different levels, right? So you can buy a, a fast charger or a small charger. Then this cable right here is to charge from 
a 12 volt uh, socket, like a car, right? And so this is rated at 100 watts. This is the little socket, the connector that goes in here, and this is what you would use to connect uh, uh, into your RV, for example, right? Or whatever device that you would want, at least up to 25 amps, right? Uh, 12 volts, so you would use that. now. Also, it came with two sets of solar panels. These are pretty great. Uh, 240 watts, that's what they're rated, right? 11 amps. Uh, and then it comes with all the cables and then solar charge controller. Now, this part I don't like. It should, this should be included inside one of these boxes. Probably this one because this is where the chargers are at. And I asked, and they did say that uh, this being a pre-production version, uh, kind of a prototype, then yeah, that's why they had to do this. But in the production version of this product, the, the solar charge controller will be inside one of these boxes. And so that's what this product looks like. So now let's go through how to use this product. You either choose the big battery or the small battery. This is the small battery here to charge it. You don't actually need both of these parts. I don't know, I, I, I'm hoping that they'll sell you just one or the other, or all, all these pieces separate, because they kind of make sense. You could just use the battery, because this is not just a battery, right? It's got a charger. Well, the charger is external, but it's got the port, and to, char to charge it, all you have to do is just plug it in like this, and then now you're charging this battery, right? Uh, but also, you could just use this battery to power all of your, uh, well, 12 volt devices, and also, well, whatever, like portable stuff, like uh, USB-C, USB 3.0, and then 12 volts, an assortment of 12 volts, right? So if you just need those voltages, you totally could use this battery just the way it is. All you have to do is just turn it on here, you charge it, and then you discharge it. But let's say that you did need to power uh, AC devices, right? Like the stuff that you find commonly at home, a uh, refrigerator, a uh, microwave, you name it. All the stuff, a TV, all the stuff that you plug in in your wall at home, then you'd need this. This is the DC to AC inverter. And the way you do it is you said not to connect it while it's uh, plugged in or when it was turned on, right? Because what you're gonna do is essentially connect it. It's got pins on the bottom here and those pins connect to sockets on the top of this. And it's very, very easy. All you do, just line it up, right? And that's it, it's installed. And now you turn it on and now the inverter turns on. And now you can connect anything in here up to 3000 watts and you should be able to use it. And also at the same time, simultaneously, you can plug in any of the lower voltage DC uh, components or you know products or devices that you might wanna power that way. You could charge this at the same time as you're discharging it. So this is very, very flexible and you can use this with this smaller battery or you can use it with the bigger battery. This at 3000 watt, it's on the upper side of uh, what these devices, the portable devices can do, right? Anything bigger than 3000 watts, then yeah, they start getting too big and too heavy, except this one, because, they, because they've because they separated it from the battery part, right? So that's the cool thing that you can, you can pretty much power anything big from charging a Tesla with this until like powering the entire building here, like which we're gonna test right now, right? So, so another cool thing is that once you do that, once you power anything from small to big, you could just change the battery. You, you could buy two of these batteries and you can be charging one while you're using the other. And then once the one you're using is fully discharged and you need to recharge it, well, you can simply just disconnect that you know, lift it, put it in the other one, and then you're ready to go without much downtime. So this is kind of hot, it's not hot swappable. Hot swappable means that you don't have to turn off your devices. In this case, you would have to, to turn it off, then disconnect it, right? And then you could put it on the other one. But it only would take a few seconds, right? There we go. Now you're back in business. Okay, now comes the part of the video where I run some tests. Now, I'm not gonna waste your time with a bunch of little tests. We're just gonna do the big ones. First, capacity. Two 
2.6 kilowatt hours represents 86.6% efficiency. Next, we're gonna load test this. Can this thing really do 3000 watts? And then, finally, we'll check the sine wave. Can this inverter provide a clean sine wave even when it's loaded? Next part of the review is when I take these things apart and we looked at the inside components, right? Was this built with quality components or is it a total chaotic mess inside? Well, let's take it apart and see what it looks like. Okay, first impressions. There's a lot of stuff that I like. There's a few things that they need to uh, improve. And I understand this is a pre-production like prototype, right? This is very early on. Uh, they'll have to change something sort of like this. The handle, this feels cheap. It feels like it's gonna break. They'll need to change that. The little legs, they need to change the legs because they have screws that are sticking past and it damages any surfaces. So you can't, at this current form, you cannot put this in any surface that you do not want to just completely destroy, right? But now let's talk about the good stuff that's in here. Uh, it seems like it's 14 cells, a range in 7S. So this is a 24 volt uh, setup, a battery setup. Why do they go with 24 volt? I'm not sure, but it seems like everyone's going lower wattage and with higher voltage because they seem things are running much, you know, much more efficient. But I think what it seems like is these are using uh, kind of off the shelf uh, components, right? And so these components are not designed and specifically manufactured for this one. So in China, there, there's a whole industry of components. You can buy inverters and you can buy inverters at any size. And it's very, very clean. Look at the design, it's layout, it's nice and clean. It's small, there's no fluff in here. And that is partly what I like about this design. Everything is kind of off the shelf and because it is kind of, it's off the shelf, then that means there's no proprietary parts. And that is very good. If this thing ever breaks, you can change everything. These connectors, you can buy them in China. These right here, you know, the, the, the plugs for the, those you can ch change them. This connector, this thing you can buy. This makes 24 into, into 12 volts. You can, you can buy these in Amazon. The BMS you can buy. Uh, the cells, probably not. A variation of this cell right here, right? A slightly different size or whatever, but about, they look about the same height, about the same length. And those are available. I, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of them, like a truckload of them, and, and then we're gonna be able to build stuff with them, right? But uh, here's another thing that I like. The, the BMS, right, is here, and that's how you turn this unit. This BMS is one that you can control remotely, turn on and off, and that's how you turn this system on. You, you click this here, and basically it tells the BMS, turn on and then it feeds everything and now it feeds the dc to dc and the dc to dc kind of feeds everything here because this is 20 12 volts and everything here is 12 volts right the only thing that i don't like is this guy right here this is the state of charge meter and it seems like what they're doing it calculates the state of charge just purely on the voltage and that's not very accurate i would love for them to put like a, a hall effect sensor or some kind of a transformer, some kind of measuring device that measures back and forth. You know, the BMS sometimes has a lot of measuring uh, devices in there, so it could be included in the BMS. Of course, you'd have to find a version that has it in there included, but you, there's standalone units that do that, and I use those in all kinds of my builds, right? So moving on to this guy right here, I like it, no fluff. Like again, it's, this is simple. You can probably find this in China. If I if you look hard enough, you'll be able to find the, the this version right here. So if this ever fries, you just order another one of these guts, you a few screws in there, you put it on there, you, you, you can swap it and then you're good and running again, right? And so that is a very good thing for uh, us people and consumers to have the right to repair and the ability and easy access to components and i think this going like this route right here is a, a, a really easy way to do that so uh, and one thing that i would suggest for them to do is to duct this better because i think right now there's too much space and as a result of that you they won't create enough uh airflow some of the other designs from uh, other makers of this stuff they use uh like see-through clear plastic to be able to duck 
these uh, fans in here so they can create uh, more pressure, right? And remove air, more air or whatever. So again, this is early in the production, pre-production, right? And so a lot of this stuff is gonna change, including, you know, putting the missing parts in here, like the chargers, solar charge controller, a few of the other things, right? They can be in here. Yeah, I, I'd say keep it like this. I'd say don't make proprietary components because that just becomes harder for your users to to repair down the line, you know, if anything anything fails or whatever. So I like this, this is, this is pretty cool. This is what I would build. This is very similar to the components that I'm currently building. And for some of those reasons, I, I find this uh, pretty appealing to me, right? And so now I'm gonna put this back together. It's really easy to take apart and it looks like it's gonna be really easy to put back together. There's another positive that this design has. All right, conclusion, do I like this? Do I recommend it? Well, with the exception of a few things and a few refinements that it needs, I like this design. I think there's more, way more pros than cons in that design, right? The ability to separate the battery from the inverter and make it about half as heavy, that is pretty ingenious. I was able to get it up here in my second floor, you know, to review it where some of the other units I wasn't able to, right? The 3,000 uh, watt hour or three kilowatt hour battery, which is one of the, the bigger one, it's 45 pounds. And 45 pounds, I can handle. Someone like me can handle that. I think the average person, the average, you know, strong person can handle 45 pounds. And therefore, you should be able to handle this and put it in the car. You will not think twice about taking it on camping or something like that, right? So. There's a lot of benefits. The only downside that it has in comparison to the con the competition is the smart meter. But to tell you the truth, you don't need that smart meter. It's sort of like the Bluetooth stuff, right? Do you need a Bluetooth app to control your, no, nobody needs it. It's just another app on your phone. You're hardly ever gonna use it. It's just a gimmick. Uh, so the smart meter, and you can live with that, the smart metering. Uh, that thing it actually can be quite useful because it just uses the voltage to tell you what the state of charge is, and it's not as accurate as, you know, a more advanced system, but it's accurate enough. You'll be able to tell if it's at 50% or around 50% state of charge, or if it's fully charged or it's completely empty, right? Which is exactly what you need. And so as long as this is not priced too expensive at the time of publishing this review. I don't know what the price is going to be. I, I'm gonna get behind it. I think I like the fact that these parts are are going to be available. I know some of them are available because I see them, some of the marketplaces in China. And so uh, that is a good thing that you're gonna be able to get parts. This product is made like products were made back in the old day. And back then you were able to work and fix your own equipment, right? And so we need to start bringing some of that back. And I think this is one of these companies that is doing that, whether that's their mission or not, it, it doesn't matter. It's just, it, it just kind of ends up being that, right? And so this product will go on Kickstarter starting on the 11th. And so I will include a link in the bottom of the description and uh, you should be able to check it out there. All right, I wanna thank you for watching this video and all your support and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.